anything can happen. It's a crazy, crazy league. That said, as you feel right now, five and four after that last night, that win in the black hole where everybody's going crazy in Oakland, your feelings are what right now, Mike? Um, on, on the positive side, Rich, I think we've got a group of, of kids that compete, and that's the most important thing to me uh, as we're trying to build a foundation. Um, but we're, we're five and four. We're, we, we're, not a, we're not a great football team by any stretch. We've got a long way to go. And uh, I think the important thing is we got to – and I learned this years and years ago. It, every day, if you get a little bit better, just every single day a tiny bit better – and keep that your focus, it's a powerful force multiplier over a season. And that's what I hope. I, I'm not worried about playoffs. I'm not worried about records. I'm worried about this young team keeping their focus and just trying to get a tiny bit better every single day. That kid Jacobs is special, Mike. You, When did you first see how special he could be? Well, I've told this story often, but real quickly. I mean, when I took the job, it was plus or minus January 1st last year. And the national championship game was in San Francisco, right down the road from Oakland. So I went to the game, and I had watched a bunch of his tape and loved them. But remember, I'm, I'm like five days on the job here with Coach Gruden. Mm-hmm. And I came back from the game and back to the office that night, and I put together a seven-play cut-up of Josh Jacobs. And if you're going to play running back for John Gruden, first you got to pass protect, then you got to catch the ball, and finally we can talk about you as a running back. And I put a seven-play reel together where it was him knocking defensive ends on their butt three times in pass pro, him catching two passes, and then finally two runs. And at 5.30 the next morning or whatever, I walked into John's office and said, I want you to watch a guy. We're going to take him in the first round. <laughs> and he's like, Mike, it's, Jan- it's January. There's no way. And I'm like, Coach, just watch seven plays with me. And we watched the seven plays, and all of a sudden he was like, eh. He, he's pretty good, Mike. He's not bad. Huh? <laughs> and, and and so to, to say he was on our radar early would be fair, and we tracked him all the way through the process. I got to tell you, Mike, when you mention pass pro and obviously catching and running and just the way that he does pass protect and the way that he can smoothly catch out of the backfield and the way that he cuts so quickly and the violence with which he runs and the way that he runs and carries people after contact – I'm watching him, and I'm thinking, who does he remind me of? He reminds me of somebody, and I'll tell you, he reminds me of Zeke. He looks like Zeke Elliott to me, and I'm wondering how far off you think I am. Well, I mean, to you, to paraphrase Bill Parcells from 30 years ago, let's not go anointing him or anything. (laughs) Um, You know, he's nine games into his career, and we're cautiously optimistic. And what's cool, Rich, is he doesn't look like he's 224 pounds, but he is. Mm-hmm. And his lateral quickness is outstanding. He, you know, he didn't run a, a great 40, and I was at the Alabama Pro Day praying he would run slow. I mean, I, I was literally at the finish line timing him, hoping it would be bad because I knew that would turn some people off. So I think his lateral quickness, his ability to make people miss, his pass protection, his hands, and the, the cool thing is he's – you know, it looks like it, the play is blocked for one yard and he gets four. And then it looks like you block it for four and he gets ten. So um, if, if, if this kid takes care of all the details, he's got a chance to be pretty good. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.